Good morning and welcome to worship today at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Walkersville. We are glad you are with us both here and in person and online. A couple of announcements. As most of you know, Tammy Snur passed away a couple of weeks ago and uh, Dee Dee's been taking care of her cat but that's become a little bit too much for Dee Dee, and she's looking for someone who would like to adopt Tammy's cat. So if you have that in your heart or you know someone that can welcome the cat into your home, give me a call and we'll figure it out. Two more weeks to go until our sight and sound trip is squared away, so make sure you see Kay about that. Um, August 26th, we have our blood drive from 10 to 4. I'm still looking for a couple of volunteers to help out with that during the day, and just let me know where you can help, and we'll get you settled in. On the 28th of August, we'll have worship here at 9.30, and then we'll shift over and move to the park at 11.30 for worship and the uh, church picnic. So come join us both times. I love seeing your smiling faces. And then we, do, then we do Autumn Lake at, at 2 o'clock after that. So you got three, three opportunities to worship on the 28th. On September 11th, we'll be doing God's work, our hands. And I know Congregational Life is looking into a couple of projects for us to accomplish during that day. So see someone, see Marcia, see Marie, whoever, to help on God's work, our hands. And then on the 18th is Rally Day, and Christian Ed is working to figure out what they're going to do for that. And So keep your eyes open in the bulletin and on the weekly email. Let's quiet our hearts for worship.
So do we have some kiddos here with some backpacks? I know two got them. <laughs> Come on up. Hey, Lena. Hey, I don't, I don't, I think that's a little too big for that young man. <laughs> I don't know, Liam. That's a lot for you to tote around, buddy. What's that? I like that. Is it, but there's fish and cats on there. I don't see any sharks. Oh, 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 I like that one. Liam should be carrying that one. Come on up, Jack. You going to come up, Bennett? I like it. All right. So today we have before us backpacks to be carried to and from school by the children and the youth gathered here. And these backpacks will contain work to be done, work that's been returned, books to be studied. Are you guys going to study? No. no. <laughs> Tools to, to do homework. Are you going to do homework? Yes. No. Yes. You're going to have a tough year this year, Bennett. I'm going to do homework. <laughs> What's that? You will have to do homework, trust me. I had to do homework. I like science school. That's pretty cool. So we have notebooks, pencils, pens, protractors. Protractors? When's the last time someone saw a protractor? <laughs> Crayons, scissors, glue sticks, and other items used for schoolwork will find their way in and out of these backpacks. Some days, so much stuff is going to fill these backpacks that you might find it as hard like Liam to carry the pack because it's going to just so much stuff. Other days, it's going to be light and easy. But on each and every day, these backpacks re represent work required of the students gathered here. And as in every aspect of our life, we bring these before God for the blessing at this time. So can we all pray together? And remember how Miss Belinda t taught us to pray to put our hands together? Can you put your hands together? We are. That's what we're doing right now. I'm getting to it. So gracious God, let us pray. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. They stand here ready to receive your blessings, and they commit themselves to study. Remember that, Bennett? Study. And learning in the school year ahead. We ask your blessing on each of them. Further, we ask your blessing on these backpacks. They will hold the schoolwork of each student and will be carried from home to school and back again. As these students carry these backpacks, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them each school day. And we pray as well for the teachers and administrators in our schools. May they also be sustained by your blessing. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and learning and surrounds them with love and care as well. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, who we seek to follow day by day. And we all answer by saying, Amen. Amen. All right, good job, guys. I don't think that happens too often there, senior. <laughs> Please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin 
receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others beside for ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. And hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are free to love as God loves you. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. of God and for the 
and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength Let us pray. O oh God, judge eternal. You love justice and hate oppression. You call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. My older sister and I joined my dad and his son's prayer group about 40 years ago <laughs> when I was a teenager. And this song, which is Prayer of St. Francis, this is the version that we did. It's, I don't know if you've ever heard it, but um, I don't know that I've ever heard it sung today compared to the other one that's Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, which I think a lot of people know. But this one takes me way back. Um, oh, sorry. Nancy, remind me of, I have to start all over. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it takes me way back because my sister and I have been doing fellowship with friends of our family who are both debilitated, husband and wife. He had a stroke in 2005, and she has Parkinson's, so they're both at the mercy of their children or anybody who stops by. And we just, we started going when Bernie had a stroke uh, because it was good occupational therapy for him because he was one of the guitarists and singers in our group and my sister and I decided that we started doing it sporadically and then we decided to do it monthly and uh, it includes you know wine and food and just socializing but we sing a lot of songs that we used to do at our church 40 years ago when I was a teenager <laughs> and so it just I, so I think every time I come here I think about what can I do what will I do and it just whatever inspires me so Yesterday's fellowship, we were singing stuff from St. James Catholic Church back in Mount Rainier, Maryland, where I grew up. 
and this one came to me, so um, I will share it with you today. If I can get myself situated here. So it is the prayer of St. Francis, but it's instead of make me a channel of your peace, it's make me an instrument of your peace. So let me just... I need my pick. Just checking the tuning. I just put new strings on. So they go out of tune when they're new. Just checking. Okay. I'm not sure if I need my pick. Make me an instrument of peace, O Lord. Make me an instrument of peace. Make me an instrument of peace, O Lord. Make me an instrument of peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is doubt, Lord, let me sow faith. Where there is injury, let me pardon too. Make me an instrument of peace. Make me an instrument of peace, O oh Lord. Make me an instrument of peace. Where there's despair, Lord, let me sow hope. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. Where there is sadness, let me sow joy. Make me an instrument of peace. Make me understand, Lord, than be understood. Rather to console, Lord, than to be consoled. Make me want to love, Lord, rather than be loved. It is in giving that we receive, and when we pardon, we are pardoned too. It is in dying that we come to live, Make me an instrument of peace. Make me an instrument of peace, O oh Lord. Make me an instrument of peace. Make me an instrument of peace, O oh Lord. Make me an instrument of peace. Make me an instrument of peace, O oh Lord. Make me an instrument of peace. Thank you. Thank you.
The first reading for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost comes from the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah, verses 23 to 29. The introduction. Because Jeremiah preaches the unpopular message of God's judgment, he suffers rejection. Today's reading distinguishes between a true prophet, like Jeremiah, who speaks God's word, and his false prophets, who misleads the people through dreams. One is like wheat, and the other like worthless straw. The first reading. Am I a God near you, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets had said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Here ends the first reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 82, read responsively by the half verse. God stands to change the divine council assembly. Giving, giving judgment, judgment in, in the midst, midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly? And show favor to the wicked. Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They wander about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods. And, and all, all of you children, children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals. And, and fall like, like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth. For you shall take all nations for your own. The second reading for today comes from the 11th chapter of Hebrews, verse 29 through the 12th chapter, verse 2. The author of Hebrews presents us with rich histories, rich stories of faith. In a long list of biblical heroes, we find examples of trust in God that enables them to face the trials of life faithfully. In addition to this cloud of witness, we have Jesus, the perfect model of faithful endurance. The second reading. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do, to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fail, fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time will fail, fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah of David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered key kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fires, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, worthy they wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all of these, though they were commanded by their faith, 
did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Here ends the second reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against mother-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It's going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of our Lord. invite the kids to come ahead and join me up here. Wow, that might be a little low for Pastor Phil to get up on. (laughs) Come on, guys. Come on up. Come on up. Have a seat. So how are you guys doing today? Good. Yeah. Do you, do you remember Vacation Bible School and what we talked about in Vacation Bible School with Miss Belinda and Miss Betsy and Miss Katie and Miss Lauren and Miss Susan? And Miss, yeah, and Miss April too. Do we remember what we were talking about? What was the first thing we said that Miss Belinda said every day that we were talking about? It was about the truths, right? What are God's truths? And we learned five of them. Do you remember? Well, Jack, you've come prepared. (laughs) Do you remember what they were? Do you remember what the five truths were? Come on, you guys got to remember. Well, well, God gives second chances. Yes. I'm five years old. You are. I'm a little older than that. But that's cool. I have a dog movie? I don't know. I, I might. Miss Sue, do we have a dog movie? Oh, wow. So, so God gave us, when we learned a vacation Bible school, God gave us a, a few truths to listen to. So there were God gives second chances. God is mighty to save. What else do we hear? Come on, you guys got to know this. God provides. What? What? What did I say? What, what do you do when, when you, we, we use our ears? We hear. Yeah, so what is God doing? He's listening. Right. 
He's listening, right? And then the, one of the last things God does that we learn was he sets us free, right? What does he set us free from? From, from trouble, right? It's like last week when we heard... Well, that's good. Then you're safe, right? Yeah, and yep. They put him in jail. Oh man. Well, we gotta pray for the bad guy because we need. We know that God is listening to him too, right? Yeah, yeah. So, what was the last last truth that we heard from Miss Belinda? And this one is really, really important. Come on, you guys. It was only a couple of weeks ago. With God. All No, that's not it. It's with God all things are possible, right? So where where do we find all of God's truths? Right here, right? So what so what we're doing today is we have a special gift especially for Clary because Clary is our third grader this year. That's pretty big, right? I like it. I like it. I might have to come with you. So, Clary, what I did so that you will remember those truths is I wrote them in the front so that you can remember them when you look for more of God's truths. Okay? Well, you know, I figured your mom would be able to hook you up. And as I was writing them, I forgot. I was like, oh, they're not going to read cursive. Curses. <laughs> but we're, we're, you'll get there, okay? Third graders, I think third graders learn cursive, don't they? Yeah, yeah so there you go. You don't know how to write your name? I only know how to write my name. Oh, okay. I know how to write my name, too. In cursive? I know how to write it in cursive. No? But we'll practice, right? I'm sure mom and dad are going to hook you up and teach you how to do that, right? So, but, you know, I've got a couple of things for you guys because you guys are going back to school too. So I figure in those backpacks, you're going to have a couple of um, books, right? Yeah. yeah. So what do you need in the book to keep your place? A bookmark. That's right. So would you all like to come grab a bookmark? Okay. Do you need one, Clary? Lil, do you want to take one to Liam? All right. He wants that one? Okay. I'm sure that's the one he'll want. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So let's, let's come down here and pray, right? Let's pray one more time. So can we, can we put our hands together like we learned? We're going to pray a little bit. It's going to be short, I promise. So can we put our hands together? You're being a kitty? Well, the kitty can put her hands together and pray too, right? All right. So dear Lord, we give thanks for everyone here today. We give thanks for all the kids that are getting their backpacks, their bookmarks, and even for Clary, who got her Bible. We ask that you come to us and just give us your love and keep giving us your truth so that we can learn about you more and more throughout our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name, and we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you for coming up, guys. Pastor Yeah? Three Captain Underpants. Holy cow. One with was Melvin, the North Rover guy, and <laughs> was a toy to Falcon. Okay. And Give me five. Hey, I Bennett, Bennett. A come whole here. Comic one. Give me five. I have a whole comic one. Okay, that's cool.
And grace be unto you at peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I'm always looking for a little angry Jesus in our lives to keep us on our toes. But that's not what Jesus was talking about when he was in conversation with the disciples, then with the people around him. But sure, he was a bit disappointed in it. Nobody seemed to understand what his mission on earth was or what he was even talking about. And this seems to be a common theme about failing to recognize Jesus and what he was sent to the world to accomplish. But we, like now Clary, have the advantage of being faithful scripture readers and can often see that backstory much clearer than the people of Jesus' time. Let's look at Jesus' proclamation about bringing fire to the earth as a good thing. One in which we really know the goodness of God in our lives. And after all the study of, our, of the Bible, I think it's fair to see Jesus as bringing the kingdom of God back, back into our lives. The kingdom of God is what will purify us and make us right in God's eyes. This is the fire that will deliver us from sin and death, not cast us into despair and sin. The kingdom of God is what Jesus had hoped was already kindled in our hearts, but that was not the case. Bringing this gift is what Jesus will give us as he goes about living out the mission of God in our midst. And Jesus' ultimate baptism will be his death on the cross. And that baptism or new, new birth will lead to our salvation. But Jesus seemingly wants to keep going and tell the people he's not here to bring peace to us. But he's going to bring division. He's going to overturn the apple cart, challenge the status quo, and bring divisions to families, father against son, mother against daughter, etc. Again, it would seem that the angry Jesus is here and ready to create dissension and discord. But in Jesus' time, not all families were equally supportive of the teacher, and this message of families being split may have spoken quite eloquently to those who are listening. Jesus' message was not easy. It was on the edges of society and not necessarily mainstream practice. And we can witness that kind of divisiveness in our society today with controversies surrounding government, church leaders, practices of the church, parishioners, and just a general mistrust for anyone in leadership positions because of the past. And we must realize that Jesus isn't against peace, but he points out that his message of release and tra transformation is bound to be divisive. However, if we look at it in a different way, Jesus is falling back on the premise that the last will be first and the first will be last. Not everyone will like how things are going to end up when the kingdom of God comes near, with the haves being left out in the cold and the have-nots going to the head of the line. Jesus' strong desire is for us to embrace his kingdom and welcome the goodness of God brings to us though he's dismayed because those in his audience cannot see the benefit of this cleansing fire. And if none of us can appreciate desire, even with the harsh image of a consuming fire, then it's likely we need help perceiving the world from the perspective of the suffering, the powerless, and the sinned against. Where in our communities do we consistently walk by someone who appears to be struggling? Where have we not extended a helping hand to someone not like us? Someone living on the fringes, barely able to get by. We are the emissaries of the kingdom of God. We are the hands, feet, and voices of God who need to work on our own purification, our own fire in our lives. And years ago, we often saw the letters WWJD, what would Jesus do? 
And our gospel passage affirms Jesus' desire for the well-being of our world. We know what Jesus did. He sacrificed himself on the cross for us. And where is it that you will stand up, be witness to the goodness in your hearts, and care for those less fortunate in our world? Luke enjoys using the language of sight, perspective, and perception to indicate our ability to grasp Jesus and what he's all about. When we repent and perceive the present time for what it is, as an available but diminishing opportunity to align ourselves with God's priorities, then we ourselves will join others in pursuing the things that make for peace. Of course, in the current time, we do that work in the midst of divisions created by a sharply conflicted society, but at least we're following someone who knows the way. Are we ready to hear the tough words? Are we able to know God is in our hearts even though there are tough decisions and relationships to be made? God's message through the prophet Jeremiah is to those who lack the courage and integrity to tell the hard truth. God has tough news to share. God's people are going the wrong way. They are doing the wrong thing. They are worshiping other gods and treating people unfairly. They need to repent, to turn around and go in a new direction. But it is hard to, live, to deliver such words, especially to people in power. So the false prophets take the easy way out, saying what the people want to hear instead of delivering the message God needs them to hear. And this is what Jesus is speaking about in her gospel. He's giving his disciples and the people the hard words they need to hear because they've strayed from God and have fallen out of the kingdom. I believe there are times when we all want to have the easy answers, that safe resolution, or just always be in a place where there is no conflict. But as we hear today from Jesus, conflict is not a bad thing as long as it is as it is done respectfully and with the goal of the Holy Spirit guiding us on a path with God-filled life. When taken with our other readings this week, Jesus' words are clear. There can be no peace as long as there is injustice in the world. Jesus is not going to be the one who claims peace while people are still suffering at the hands of the powerful. He is the embodiment of what is imagined in Jeremiah 23 and Psalm 82. And we are called to follow in his footsteps and can do so in courage because he goes ahead of us and with us. The kingdom of God is telling us about is the one that is not that to be attained through force or might, but by forgiveness, not by fear, but by courage, not by power, but by humility. And this is a tough message for those who are at the top of the heap and feel they will lose their status, wealth, and power, for it is they who believe they know what is best for the rest of the world. And for this purpose, Jesus brings the message of peace that will cause division even amongst families, because there's, there are those who will not see the true gift of God in their lives. It is not wealth or power. It's the love of God. Jesus basically tells the people they can't see the forest for the trees. They can't recognize the goodness of God in their lives, and therefore he is here to set the record straight. He's bringing the good news of a way for everyone to attain the ultimate goal, a relationship with God through him. The love of Christ is what matters and should be all-consuming in our lives, like the fire of Christ's baptism on the cross. And we embrace the fire of the cross through the remembrance of our own baptism and welcome the Holy Spirit into our midst to allow for the divisions to be cast away. 
and by being willing to let down our guards, listen attentively, forsake our vanity, and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work, we, we open our doors to this Spirit. There are times when we, in our lives when we will not always agree on the method by which we attain our goals. But we have to remember they are not our goals, but God's goals, reaching us in furtherance of his mercy and grace. The good news is that the destructiveness of sin is removed by Jesus' love and forgiveness, his fire. Jesus has taken away the sting of fire out of our lives and replaced it with the goodness and mercy of God. And all we have to do is do as Jesus taught, to love our neighbor as Jesus loves us. In this next week, let someone know the love of God envelops them. When you go from this place, share the love of God with anyone who will listen. But most importantly, share the love of God right here and right now. The kingdom of God is here. Do not be afraid to welcome those with whom you might disagree. Be the one who shares the fire of Christ within your soul. And never forget, Christ is always with you. Recognize the love Christ has for us and allow his fire to spread to all the world. Welcome the renewal of fire in our hearts as we welcome the renewal of fire on earth. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. Renew our commitment to our siblings in faith around the globe and bless the work of our ecumenical and interfaith partners. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your creation. We pray for all places affected by natural disasters. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Strengthen their resolve to defend those who are vulnerable and to stand publicly against all forms of oppression. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for people harmed by racist discrimination, ableist discrimination, and all people discriminated against based on their gender or sexual orientation. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep, especially Hazel, Jack, Tom, Joanna, April, Corey, Florence, Nancy, Noah, Anne, Maggie, Marie, Jason, Bruce, Bob W., Jacob, Bob, Brandon, Joy, Dave, those on our prayer list and those whom we name in our hearts are out loud. Corey's cohort at CLTS. In our joy and in our tears, be near to us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us, especially Jack Williams, Second Lieutenant Evan Fitzgibbon, and Army Staff Sergeant George Tabor. May we run with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. God, in your mercy, Hear a prayer. Receive the prayers of your children and merciful God and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. As always, we are thankful for the gifts you share with this church and we ask that you share throughout the world. we may be fed with the bread of love. 
God of abundance, you, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. harvest. As, As we, we feast, feast on your goodness, goodness strengthen us to labor in your field, and, and equip, equip us to bear fruit, fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection to open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. Christ has, has risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Gathered into one with the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread. bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Welcome at God's table. Come as you are. The feast is prepared. The table is set. Come and eat.
please stand as you're able. <clears throat> May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Life-giving God, through this meal you've bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you you, excuse me, and show you the path of life this day and always. Go in peace. Let the fire stir in your heart and serve your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.